forget everything you thought you knew about human evolution. For more than 30 years, population geneticists have accepted the out-of-Africa concept as truth, despite early reservations among phylogeneticists with expertise beyond the human genus. The paleontological basis for the theory is likewise unclear, a situation that has been more pronounced in recent decades as the Eurasian paleontological record has grown. It is widely assumed that the first individuals of the Homo sapiens species resided in Africa, and that Homo sapiens sapiens emerged on the same continent. The majority of experts feel that only the precise timing of our subspecies origin has to be determined. This assumption may be incorrect though, because highly compelling new evidence reveals that the Homo sapiens sapiens subspecies likely originated in Eurasia. In fact, a highly cited geneticist at the University of Lund in Sweden, in a study titled The Reversal of Human Phylogeny, Homo left Africa as Erectus, returned as Sapiens Sapiens, placed the last common ancestor of Homo Sapiens Sapiens and Neanderthals somewhere in southern Eurasia. According to the study, the African Bushmen and Pygmies were part of the initial flight of Homo Sapiens Sapiens into Africa from southwestern Asia. Furthermore, Africa lacks fossils of the Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA sister group of Homo sapiens sapiens, a critical phylogenetic situation. In point of fact, the geographic limitation of Neanderthals to Eurasia, as well as genetic exchanges between Neanderthals and sapiens, provide fundamental paleontological and molecular evidence consistent with the origin and continued existence of Homo sapiens sapiens in Eurasia, according to the study. In terms of paleontology and archaeology connected to Homo sapiens evolution, the Eurasian advances in this field over the last 25 years are of great importance. The early phases of the evolution were explored in the study that linked the morphology of Homo sapiens and Homo erectus to a continuous Homo sapiens admixing in Asia, including gene flow between Eastern and Western Asia. According to their overlapping morphology, Scientists have designated Homo sapiens and Homo erectus as different subspecies of Homo sapiens, termed Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus. According to the scientific evidence, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens split up genetically more than 500,000 years ago. According to the paper, this period, together with what is known about Neanderthal geographic range, places the earliest of our own subspecies somewhere in Eurasia. The presence of Neanderthals exclusively in Europe and Asia, as well as their absence from Africa, limits their origin to Eurasia. As a result, the origin of their sister group, Homo sapiens, should be situated on the same continent, in accordance with the concept that the last common ancestors of any two sister groups cannot be separated in time or space. Furthermore, the reversal of phylogeny in the Homo sapiens sapiens tree is consistent with the molecular identification of the sister group relationship between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor. As well as a Eurasian separation into Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens around 850,000 years ago, within a diversifying population of Homo erectus. However, some anthropologists disagree with the notion that Homo antecessor is the last common ancestor. Homo antecessor possesses the oldest modern face that has been discovered to date. Its flattened features and delicate cheekbones are comparable to those of modern humans, as opposed to the massively developed faces of Neanderthals. This has led to the startling theory that last common ancestor may have resembled us in certain ways. Our supposedly modern face is actually rather ancient, and the face of the Neanderthal may actually be more derived. Scientists came to the conclusion that the last common ancestor had a face like Homo antecessor, combined with teeth that were more Neanderthal-like while the part of the skull encasing the brain looked like the enigmatic soprano cranium found in Italy. This analysis took into account everything we can currently infer about our parent species. These fossils are probably hidden somewhere, but they haven't been found yet. So, the search continues. The basic reality is that Neanderthals are not known to have lived in Africa, implying that they evolved in Eurasia. If Neanderthals emerged in Eurasia, the ancestral group from which they diverged, archaic Homo sapiens, should likewise have lived there. It is a logical argument with significant validity. It seems undeniable that Homo erectus, the most likely candidate for Homo sapiens' immediate predecessor, had spread across much of Eurasia by 1.8 million years ago. 
there is mounting evidence that the ancestors of both subspecies were present in Eurasia prior to the split that gave rise to Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Sapiens, and that humans nearly identical to those of living populations emerged in East Asia long before they appeared in the African fossil record. In fact, archaeologists working on numerous Chinese finds have announced the discovery of fossils that appear to be early modern humans, with related ages ranging from 80,000 to 178,000 years. The report also cites data from the Simons Genome Diversity Project, a seminal genetic survey, which reveals that around 200,000 years ago, modern human populations were already separating into new genetic lineages. This astounding discovery supports a paradigm in which Africans and non-Africans began to diverge genetically close to the time, linked with the oldest accepted fossils of modern humans, the 195,000-year-old Omo fossils from Ethiopia. Yet, the Simons Genome Project revealed evidence of new Homo sapiens sapiens divergences involving the Yoruba, a West African population thought to be the living ancestors of the population responsible for the origins of all non-African lineages. Close to 200,000 years ago, hundreds of thousands of years after ancient humans departed Africa, the ancestors of the Khorasan and Bhuti split from the ancestors of the Yoruba. These African populations stayed independent on the same continent until 70,000 years ago, when members of the Yoruba people migrated out of the continent and conquered the planet, according to the Out of Africa theory. To be honest, it's hard to comprehend why these two populations in the same location would just stop mingling for tens of thousands of years. Such clean breaks are typically recorded only after migration episodes. The study found that the ancestral Homo sapiens population began to establish genetic substructures more than 200,000 years ago, which is consistent with commonly accepted estimates of the current Homo sapiens basal divergence. According to the Out of Africa theory, early Homo sapiens evolved in Africa, with the three subspecies, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Sapiens, emerging on the continent no later than 500,000 years ago. Then Neanderthals and Denisovans left Africa immediately after diverging from Sapiens, leaving no fossil remains or genetic imprint. According to the Out of Eurasia model, Homo sapiens archaic ancestors arrived in Eurasia before the divergence of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Sapiens. After that, Neanderthals and Denisovans remained in Eurasia and never came into contact with Africans. Around 200,000 years ago, a group of Homo sapiens sapiens split off from the greater Eurasian population and migrated to Africa. The support for an African divergence between Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens sapiens is hypothetical, however, given the lack of any paleontological or archaeological Neanderthal findings in Africa. The molecular problems associated with out of Africa are similar in that the results have been interpreted solely in accordance with the preconception of a basal Homo sapiens sapiens divergence in Africa, a supposition that naturally followed the hypothetical placement of the Neanderthal sapiens divergence in that continent, according to the new phylogenic study. In reality, African paleontology concerning Homo sapiens genesis and evolution is noticeably inferior to that of Eurasia. In fact, the description of the fossils of Homo nalidi, which contain by far the biggest assemblage of Homo fossils in Africa, greatly expanded the African Homo picture outside of Homo sapiens. The fossils were discovered in the Dinalidi chamber and the Lezedi chamber of South Africa's rising star cave system. Nonetheless, there are no further hominid fossils at any location in the region outside of the cave system. The Dinalidi fossils were discovered to date between 236,000 and 335,000 years ago, according to multiple dating techniques. Based on the two least worn Nalidi teeth discovered, another calculation provided a maximum average age of 253,000 years, and a minimum average age of 200,000 years. Indeed, the abundance of Homo Nalidi fossils is striking in comparison to the scarcity of Homo sapiens fossils in a location that, according to supporters of the Out of Africa hypothesis, may have served as the cradle of Homo sapiens. Another situation is the question of how Homo sapiens and Homo nalidi, which may have had comparable ecological niches, could coexist in the same location for so long. Taken together, the findings support the hypothesis that Homo nalidi originated in southern Africa without competition from Homo sapiens, 
and that the extinction of Homo naledi was caused by a later invasion of Homo sapiens from the north. According to the study, the Flory's bad skull would be an example of early Homo sapiens intruders from the north in this scenario. Therefore, the findings are consistent with the paleontologically established presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, a Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor around 850,000 years ago, a divergence between Homo sapiens and the ancestor of Neanderthals and Denisovans around 800,000 years ago, and a mitochondrial DNA introgression from Homo sapiens into Neanderthals around 500,000 years ago. In addition, if Homo antecessor is the last common ancestor of modern humans and Neanderthals, it may push two other preferred candidates, Homo bodoensis and Homo heidelbergensis, off the primary line of descent leading to modern humans, turning them into side branches on an expanding family tree of humans. Many researchers find that revision to be excessively sweeping. However, some believe the new family tree and all of its offspring can help to explain the more varied fossil record. Others. On the other hand, regard the new order to be a welcome resolution to Homo heidelbergensis status as a wastebasket taxa that comprises remains from many parts of Africa and Europe. Making things orderly means reserving the name Homo heidelbergensis for the European fossils, and assuming that the fossils from Africa are the nameless progenitors of Homo antecessor. The early modern human fossils found in China also readily support the out of Eurasia and into Africa theory which is supported by the existence of a continuous Asian population of Homo sapiens sapiens without the necessity for an imagined extinct African population. Evidence indicating Neanderthals and sapiens interbred around 220,000 years ago in Europe, and 130,000 years ago in Siberia, both of which are now problematic for the out-of-Africa theory, is readily included into the out-of-Eurasia theory. Thus, the findings demonstrated that Eurasia was the donor rather than the receiver in the evolution of Homo sapiens. The discovery that early humans left Africa as Homo erectus, and returned as Homo sapiens sapiens represents a shift in human evolution theory to one that is consistent with the Eurasian record of human paleontology and archaeology. For a very long time, it was believed that our species originated from a small, diverse community that lived in a remote area of Africa. Evidence refuting this notion first surfaced over 20 years ago, but it has only recently gained widespread acceptance. Perhaps cultural factors can explain this. Truth be told, a pure human form emerging on one continent and spreading to replace all others has deep implications. In Europe, it is called colonialism, and in the United States, it is known as manifest destiny.